It smells like egg. Hello everyone, welcome to a subscriber recommended video. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, get them hands. Yes, that's right. Luxinda got in touch on Instagram, wanting me to try glass etching. And you ask, you shall eventually receive. Oh, you can't even tell there's glass there. I bet I sound weird though. But there's a, a sheet of glass in front of us. I got some glass. And it's kind of a weird one because I thought glass etching was using like a little engraving tool to like etch into the glass obviously. But it's not. You use a cream. A cream for etching onto glass. Who knew? What a world we're living in. Probably a lot of people knew but I didn't know. And when Luxinda got in touch on Instagram she mentioned a video from. Let me just check the creator. Blissfully untrained, unversed and unprepared. A person called Jennifer Maker on YouTube and this creator makes loads and loads of videos about glass etching so if you are super interested and you want to know from someone who actually knows what they're doing I would suggest you go and watch her channel but in their video they etched a wine bottle and some wine glasses and they looked absolutely lovely but I just didn't kind of fancy it I don't know I wasn't in a wine bottle wine glass kind of mood something's not right weird for me I know very strange so instead I thought I would try and etch a solid piece of glass I'm a little bit worried about this process because it does sound a little bit dangerous so if everything goes wrong well, I might just die. Keep your fingers crossed. Okay, so my plan for this piece of glass is to create like a kind of floral mural. So I bought some floral stickers and they just look like this, a wide variety of different kinds. And then I also bought some vinyl sheets just in case I wanted to add some extra detail. And hopefully this goes okay. All right, so let's get into this first. Oh, these are well nice. Oh, how pretty are these? Oh, they're ridiculously cute, aren't they? Lovely. Because obviously, with these stickers, I'm trying to think about it. They might be a little bit more abstract rather than figurative because they've got a lot of extra sticker around the outside of it. And I can't be asked to cut every single sticker down because I'm going to need loads of them. So it might just be, I don't know, like a little bit interesting, a little bit ambiguous. Vocab. And who doesn't love an ambiguous... Thing. Vocab. Are these actually stickers? Have I bought stickers? I'm sure these were stickers. Oh, it's in Japanese, I can't read it. I'm sure these said they were stickers. How would you get the back off them? Oh yeah, they are stickers. I nearly had a panic attack. I thought, I don't know what I thought I bought, but they didn't feel like a sticker. This is why I need to grow my fingernails because I just have a hard time doing anything with my little stumps. Check it out. Good, crisis averted. So if we just kind of place our stickers onto the glass, I have cleaned this glass. Lies. Before I started. Yeah, I think this will work fine. This is gonna take me absolutely ages just to stick the stickers on the glass but I'm hoping it's going to be worth it because I do have an idea in my head what this kind of etched piece of glass is going to look like and in my head it looks really nice so we'll see if that actually translates. I feel like I'm going to spend the majority of this video just trying to get the back of these stickers. They are so well made it's unreal and I am aiming for like a very kind of gathered clustered kind of effect. I don't want it to be like dead sparse. And obviously Luxinda recommended that I do this, this little craft idea. And I can imagine, and I'm pretty sure, based on comments I've seen, that we're all missing her from YouTube. Which I didn't realise it was going to be her last upload when we did the little collab thing. And although you miss someone, I think it's also important to respect kind of people's boundaries and stuff like that. Because people have various different reasons why they do things or why they don't do things and stuff. Because I think as well, a lot of people who don't create content think of kind of content creation or people who do create content they have quite like a glamorous life and things are like mega easy and stuff like that and for some it might be some it might be a very glamorous life and it might be easy and they're out just kind of partying and pissing around and doing whatever they want but other content creators it's actually a lot of hard work I don't think it would be too much kind of work in itself if you didn't have anything else going on but if you have kind of jobs and a busy life and other things and other situations happening it can be quite I don't know, it can be quite chewy and stressful. Like, there's plenty of times when I've kind of created content and stuff and I've just been overwhelmed and stressed out with it and all kinds of different emotions. I can never find a bloody pen in here! So I do think it's very important to respect people's wishes. You know, people have lots of different stuff happening, but I know a lot of you miss her and you never know. She might end up coming back at some point, but she also might not. It's completely up to her. It's whatever makes her happy. Facts! And if there are any content creators out there who are struggling with kind of mental health or any other kind of issues and stuff, my top advice would be is create content well ahead of time. So I create videos two months in advance. So if by any chance I need like a break or I need some downtime or 
I'm going through like a little bit of a rough patch or anything like that, I'm able to have a break and to kind of reassess things and figure stuff out. Not all the time, but the majority of the time I can. So I think that's a very important bit of advice. And I think another thing that happens as well, especially with smaller creators, is that they'll kind of get compared, or not really compared to, but get Oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Yes! They're almost put at the same level as content creators who are on a different level, if that makes sense. So there'll be content creators out there who are making hundreds of thousands of pounds a year, if not more, like plus plus, like millions. And that's all they do is content creation for like their job and stuff. And they'll have like a team of staff helping them create the videos, edit, source materials, even come up with ideas and stuff. And I think sometimes people put smaller creators who don't do that and don't have that and don't have those resources on the same level as them. Like, I'm not on the same level as that at all. I have no one helping us. I do everything myself and I make barely anything from YouTube. So I think it's important to keep that kind of stuff in mind as well. If I didn't enjoy making content, I wouldn't be making videos anymore. It just wouldn't be worth it. Like, I'm trying to save for a home at the moment and it's just, it's absolutely impossible. <laughs> right, oh my god, I've barely done anything. I'm 15 minutes in and I've literally barely done anything. This is gonna take us all day. To be fair, I think I would kind of like this even if the encaustic stuff didn't work and just have the stickers on. I think this is quite a nice little idea actually. I'll show you up closer later on once I'm done because you won't be able to see that far away, but it looks really pretty. Things would go a lot quicker if I could get the backs of these bastard stickers. Another thing that happened to us recently as well, a bit of a weird thing to be fair, I'm pretty sure I saw a ghost the other day. Wait for me. Or like some sort of like weird shit happening. Like I was coming along from work and it was it was late-ish at night but it wasn't too late. And anyway the back wall of this kind of waiting area, there was like this like black kind of smoke almost like trailing up the wall and I thought there was like a little fire or something. I was like oh what's happened? And then I like kind of like did the like blah, 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 and like rub my eyes and stuff and then there wasn't anything there. Sorry, I might have just been really tired but I don't know it was very freaky. So I was either very tired and my mind was playing tricks on us or some crazy shit was happening. <laughs> and I do work in a hospital so I can imagine if there are any ghosts or spirits flying around anywhere that's the place they would be wouldn't they? <laughs> but feel free to let me know if you've ever seen a ghost or anything or just something that seemed a bit off. You know, so I don't know whether I fully believe in ghosts or not, but crazy shit happening. These stickers are pissing me off something rotten. <laughs> right, well, I think I'm gonna fly through this and see if I can get all the stickers on before I lose my mind with these stickers. And then once I've got them all on, I'll show you what it's looking like and we can move on to what will be the most dangerous step. I know, terrifying, isn't it? Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with the amount of stickers I've got stuck on this glass. You're not going to be able to see it very well, but it's like this floral kind of piece of glass. And there's plenty on there. There's not too many because I didn't want to get too carried away. Now, first thing I need to do is protect my table because this cream stuff's quite corrosive and I don't want to damage my table. Not that it particularly matters because my table's knackered anyway, but still. So I'm just going to pop some paper down. Okay, perfect. You can see the picture a little bit better now as well. So I'm gloving up. Kinky. Because I don't want to get this stuff on my skin. Otherwise, I will get burns. I also have windows open in the studio just for ventilation. But if you're doing this at home, I would advise either doing it outside or if you're going to do it inside, have like a proper ventilator mask on. But I don't have one, so I'm not going to bother. But at least open a window, okay? Health and safety. Right, give this a shake. And then I'm just going to pour this straight onto here. That's very thick. That's what she said. And just kind of brush that onto the glass. And you want to get the entire thing covered. And I think quite like a thick amount of this stuff on. Absolutely stinks. Ew, it smells really horrible. It doesn't smell nice. It absolutely stinks. It smells like something I've used before. I don't know what. Right, I'm going to have to open another window. I tell you what it smells like. Fat. It smells like egg. It really does. As you can tell, I'm enjoying this. Because basically what this cream's going to do is eat away into the glass and corrode it basically. Like take the surface of it off. So that's 
that's how dangerous this cream is. And you might be thinking, oh well, what about the stickers and stuff? It doesn't work on plastic. I don't know what else it works on, but I know it works on glass, but it won't work on like perspex or acrylics or anything like that. That's why we're using stickers and that'll create our negative space, hopefully. <gasps> Proper hums, oh my God. I was not expecting it to smell this bad. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. I'm leaving the studio because that smell is unbearable and I'm gonna leave this for five minutes and then we're gonna rinse it off. But I am getting out because it absolutely hums. Okay, so five minutes are up and now we're just rinsing all of this cream off the glass and let's hope it's worked. And this eggy smell has all been worthwhile. <laughs> So now we just need to dry our glass off. I feel like it might have worked, you know. It feels a bit frosty. So now we're just peeling all these stickers off and we should be left with a negative space. And hopefully this actually looks half decent. Oh, well it's definitely worked, so that's good. I don't know whether it's actually going to look good, but the technique's worked, so I'm happy about that. I'm glad, because it's taken so long to do. And there we have it, an etched bit of glass. You can kind of like see that it's flowers and stuff. And obviously this is very basic, but like if you look at the light behind. One sec. If you imagine you could probably do some like really cool things and create like a light box or some sort of like frame panel using this technique and then you could also go back into it with some glass paint and add even more detail. This is just very very basic just trying out a little thing but I think this technique has a lot of potential for some really fun and interesting things. It's really really cool actually. I think the one thing I would say is if you're a bit scared of using this etching material stuff which absolutely absolutely stinks and it's quite corrosive. A good dupe for this would be just to use like a frosted glass spray and you would get a very, very similar effect. But not too bad, I'm quite pleased with that. It's worked a lot better than I thought it was going to. So that just about does it for today's glass etching video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And a big thank you to Luxinda for suggesting this. I had a lot of fun. I was a little bit worried about obviously using the cream and how dangerous it could be, but it wasn't too bad. And I'm really happy with the results I got. Like how fun is that? They like I can just kind of like peek through the flowers. And I'll see you next week for a brand new video. And I am going to go away and open every single window in this studio because the studio absolutely stinks of eggs. You have no idea how eggy that cream actually smells like. It is filthy, pure farts. It feels like I've stuck my head in like a septic tank or something. Absolutely stinks. Horrible stuff.